Hello, Professor Hal Williams. Thank you so much for joining us Pleasure. today. And thank you for giving a fantastic talk. Um, okay. It's the Arthur Ruffer mm -hmm. Um And you spoke on how to reduce waste in dermatology research. So would you be able to share some of your top tips on this topic? Well, I think the first thing is to recognize that there is such a thing as research waste and that it does occur in dermatology. So when I talk about research waste, I'm talking about low priority questions being researched or research that's happening when it's already been done mm -hmm. or outcomes that are not really important to patients and clinicians being measured or the research not being published mm -hmm. or the outcomes being switched or some outcomes not being reported at all or the, re the report not being usable. So that's what I mean by dermatology research waste. So in terms of top tips and I'm talking mainly here, but I guess, about clinical trials or applied research. Um, I think the first step is to stop. <laughs> stop and see if the work has been done before. Look to see if there has been a systematic review in the area and what the research gaps are. And if there are research gaps, then don't go heading off and just repeating a study, but just stop and have maybe a prioritization exercise with clinicians, nurses, patients, mm -hmm. and decide what the priority, what's the most important research question. Because by bringing a community together, that's much more attractive to funders, that you've thought what's out there already, it's a research gap, it's important to the NHS, and prioritizing the research. So that's my first tip, mm -hmm. is to work with patients and clinicians to prioritize research and to stop and see what has been done already. I think the second tip would be to, um, if you're doing a clinical trial, you must register it before recruitment begins. And I, I give the analogy in the talk of playing cards. Um, place your bet mm -hmm. and show us your hand. So you place your bet by saying, I believe this trial will have an outcome on overall mortality. And then at the end of the study, you show your cards, which includes overall mortality, rather than it mysteriously disappearing from the report. So that's the second tip. Mm -hmm. I think the third tip is we must improve the quality of our research, particularly clinical trial design. And for that, in the UK, we are blessed with clinical trial units, research design services, and just simple things by concealing randomization, for example, and having blinded outcomes. And I guess the final tip then would be to make sure that when you publish your report, you publish it fully following things like consort, which says all of the things that you should report in a clinical trial. So if you're buying a second-hand car or an auto trader, mm -hmm. you look, don't you? Service history, has Indeed. it got an MOT? Well, the same. If you're buying a clinical trial, you need to see certain key features described. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't just stop there with the report. You really have to work then and think, well, should I be doing something about this. It's all very well talking and reporting is important, mm -hmm. but unless it's acted upon, then that research is of little value. So it's very important to put effort into, I feel like, enhancing the dissemination of that report so that it's used in real life. That's beautifully summarised. Um, in the talk, you mentioned some resources uh, that might help people when they're tackling research. Would you be able to elaborate on this? Yes, I, I would. I would suggest just go to our Centre of Evidence-Based Dermatology website. Just put it in your internet browser, the Centre of Evidence-Based Dermatology, and go to the resources area, because we've got lots of resources in there. We're not selling anything. They've all been developed with public funds, and they're all free at any internet. You don't even have to belong to a university. Or they're all free, and there's sorts of re resources there. are maps of systematic reviews. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are Cochrane reviews, Cochrane skin reviews, over a hundred of them, all free on common skin diseases, very high quality systematic reviews. We have the GREAT database, the global resource of eczema trials, mm -hmm. and again, that's completely free. If seven databases have been searched for you, so don't waste time looking yourself. I use it in the clinic, for example, uh, and there are maps of evidence. There are lots of things there. Um, so, so that's what I'd recommend. Go to Centre of Evidence-Based Dermatology, find what is useful to you. And, and, and if you feel, having visited, there is a lot of useful things there, just send an email to our information specialist, Douglas Grinley, 
and he will put you on the mailing list. We have over a thousand mm. research users who, uh, on a monthly basis, get a summary by topic uh, of recently completed important, clinically important systematic reviews. I would highly recommend that. I'm subscribed to that. So you belong already. Well yeah. done. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure.